I teach peace building in a graduate program here at Eastern Mennonite University, and I work in Kabul at Kabul University in their peace studies department to also teach peace building to Afghans who are already doing community work and promoting peace in their communities. So I go every three months for about two weeks, and every time I stay at the International Assistance Mission uh, guest house, and I saw Glenn on every visit. I think all of us know who do the work there that there are security concerns. I plan to go back in October and continue the work, and I know International Assistance Mission, which is the longest standing international NGO that's been there through the Taliban, through the Soviets, through many, many hard times, plan also to continue to stay despite what happened last week. Our mission at Eastern Mennonite University is to prepare our graduates to serve and lead in a global context. We have a lot of graduates, thousands, serving both in the United States and around the world, and in some cases they serve in some very difficult and dangerous locations. Glenn Lapp was doing just that. He took his education at EMU and at Johns Hopkins, prepared himself to be a nurse, and he was serving in a humanitarian environment. And all of us at EMU grieve with his family, with Mennonite Central Committee, with his colleagues for the loss of their lives as well as the loss of many lives in Afghanistan over the last number of months. I think it's really important for us to continue doing what we've been doing, and that is both in our undergraduate programs and in the Center for Justice and Peace Building, to prepare the graduates to walk boldly in the way of peace and to serve in ways that are nonviolent around the world, even when it's in difficult places. I met Glenn Lapp in December of last year when I began my work in Afghanistan with non-governmental organizations like the International Assistance Mission. And that organization was my host actually and I stayed at their guest house and met with many of the other staff who were on this trip uh, that turned fatal last week in Afghanistan. Glenn was with Mennonite Central Committee and working with the International Assistance Mission as a Mennonite, I knew him that way, and he was my primary host in Kabul. And Glenn and I had a lot of opportunity at dinners every night around the table with the other International Assistance Mission development workers to talk about humanitarian work in Afghanistan. There are thousands of people, uh, both from Western countries and Afghans, partnering um, and doing the work of development, providing humanitarian aid, digging wells, building schools, all the kinds of things that you need to actually build a nation that is secure and peaceful. And Glenn was working with a medical team that was based in Kabul at the Noor Eye Hospital, but was traveling around the country to regions that did not have eye care or medical care. And so the mission that he was on was difficult and dangerous because it was going into regions where there are not very many foreigners. Many of the other international NGOs don't allow their staff out into these other regions. U.S. government workers don't travel at all, really, unless they're armed and behind uh, barricades and fences. And so what Glenn and I are both doing in Afghanistan is quite different. And the first week I was in Afghanistan, uh, Glenn was leading me around the city. We were walking in the streets, and I asked him, are there other Americans around? And he said, basically, no. The, on the street, you don't see many other Americans walking. And in hindsight, the last conversation I had with him just a month ago when I was in Kabul was about the problems of the U.S. developing policy from behind barbed wire without really getting out and walking in the streets and listening and talking with Afghans themselves. So Glenn was a prophet in many ways in thinking about a whole other way the international community could think about engaging with Afghans as partners in development. And so I think that one lesson we can pull away here is that there are risks for soldiers, certainly, when they're fighting in Marja. Humanitarian workers take other risks to go into areas and to build relationships with people and to provide humanitarian assistance. And um, in this situation, often they have a much clearer perspective of the countryside, of the people, of what's actually happening in Afghanistan. And people like Glenn Lapp need an ear in Washington. And I hope his life, now that it's over, can continue to speak for the need for that kind of humanitarian aid in Afghanistan.